Hello guys, Simamel here, and finally we are back to the Know Your Know series. This time we are going to talk about the non-uniform blur, one of my favorites. So let's get started. I think the easier way to understand how it works is by connecting a square shape node in both inputs, and set everything to the lowest values except from the intensity. If we move the intensity, we can see what is happening. A new layer of the same shape but with lower luminance is being added over the original, and as you increase the intensity, the offset to the left increases. Now, if we increase the samples, the number of layers increases, giving the effect of a smooth transition instead of stair-stepping. Another thing that we can notice is that it seems like the overall shape is moving to the left, as you can see here. That is when the blades become important. Let's reduce the samples to the minimum and increase the blades. With each increase, a new layer is added, and its position seems to be on the opposite side of the previous one. That creates a concentric effect with a little bit of an offset and as a consequence, the center of the shape stays in place. Now, if we increase the samples, we get one of the best ways to use this node, which is to convert alpha masks into 3D height maps. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Let's take this logo as an example and connect it in both inputs of the non-uniform blue. Then, let's move the samples and the blades all the way to the top. And the result is a gradient height map that we can easily manipulate with our nodes. For example, with this curve node. Another great option to use this node is to break the silhouette in an organic way. For example, if we connect a square and a purling noise, then in the non-uniform blur we increase the samples and the blades, and finally, at all levels to increase the contrast, we can get a nice organic silhouette. The same technique but without the levels to add contrast can be an easy way to get some nice organic bevel. For example, for the wood tiles of a material like this one. And the final effect that I constantly create with this node is to add gravity. For example, if we connect a square plus a purling noise, as you can see here, then crank up the samples and isotropy and asymmetry, but keep up the blades to a minimum, we get this melting effect. Now, before we wrap this up, let's talk about the anisotropy and asymmetry. Anisotropy will make the effect to show only in one axis. This can be useful, for example, to create tubes from squares, as you can see here. And the asymmetry, will make the effect only to apply to one half, as you can see here. By mixing both and playing with the angle, you can have full control of the direction of the effect. Especially useful for corners. Well, that's all for now. Remember to like and subscribe, and if you have any questions, feedback or idea for a tutorial, let me know in the comments. Good luck!